Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today is part two in my series on how to make a solar generator. This can be used as a power system in a van or RV, and it can also be removed, as you see here, and used as a standalone power system. We've got a 30 watt solar panel attached to the top. We've got some adjustable angle mounts, so we can adjust that angle to the sun and our latitude. I've got it set at 30 degrees because where I am in Houston, Texas, we're at 30 degrees north latitude. So that's how you would set that angle. And uh, just overall with the unit, you can see I kind of made a face out of the uh, control panel here. I realized I had all the components to do that, so I couldn't resist. Maybe trying to add a little personality to our plywood box here. But uh, we've got our on off switches. We've got some USB outlets, a 12 volt socket. So these are both 12 volts running straight off the battery inside. And uh, we have a uh, Victron BMV712 battery monitor. It's gonna tell us what's going on with our battery, how much power is going in or out of that battery. And we can take a reading here at the unit or we're also gonna get a Bluetooth signal we can pick up with the Victron Connect app on our smartphone or tablet and uh, read that data there. And then lastly, we just have a regular power outlet. This is gonna put out 120 volts from the internal inverter. And uh, what I'd like to do is plug in a couple of items and just demo our control panel and show what the unit can do. And uh, we'll also take a look inside. I have to say in part one of this series, I'll link down below, uh, we looked at the internal components and how they work together and what kind of functionality we can expect. I'm gonna open up the inside of the unit and we'll take a look, but with all the wires, it is a little bit crazy in there. So if you want a real uh, lesson on how to design the internals of one of these units, I would check out part one. Again, link down below. So you can see on the side, we have these uh, Anderson power pole connectors. We have an inlet from PowerWorks and that allows us to easily uh, unplug and plug in our solar panels. So let me, replug that in but um, we're able to unplug a 30 watt unit like this and put this in a van or rv and we can plug in the wires from the rooftop solar array and uh, we'll demo that with a rooftop 300 watt unit so the unit is made to process a 30 watt panel a 300 watt panel as long as it's below 440 watts which is what the solar charge controller inside can handle uh, it's going to process that power just the same whether it has a small or large solar panel feeding it through that Anderson power pole connector. So that's kind of a quick disconnect that uh, allows us to interchange our different solar panels and have the unit process them just the same. And you can see there's an inline fuse here in the positive line. That also gives us overcurrent protection that is sized for each particular solar panel and then um, that way, once the power gets in, the unit's gonna process it. We've also got a breaker in there on the um, solar charge controller on the outgoing side of it, but uh, we're gonna put those fuses in externally so that you can uh, change out your solar panels and uh, have that overcurrent protection as well. You can also see we have these uh, pocket holes along the side, and uh, I used a Craig K4 pocket hole jig. Let me show you that. Uh, this is, I believe, about $100. This is one of their more expensive jigs, but this is really great for doing the pocket holes in any kind of box or cabinetry like this. And uh, there are some that are hidden inside the case there, so they don't all have to be on the outside. Sometimes you can put them on the outside and make kind of a design feature, maybe a more industrial look. Um, or if you need to bolt something together from the outside, uh, you can do that as well. And lastly, you can see we have some little casters on the bottom and the feed on the front. That's way, that way you can roll the unit around and um, transport it, move it to where you need without having to completely lift it up. So what I'd like to do is zoom in. We'll demo the capabilities of this unit. But before we do that, if you are interested in your overall van power system and you need help with that, I've got an excellent resource for you called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. It's got a discussion of the three major charging sources for vans solar power, shore power, and alternator power, and how they all have strengths, but they also have weaknesses, but together they're gonna to give you a well-rounded power strategy that's gonna make sure you have a good charge no matter where you find yourself out on the road. 
So there's a discussion on those three charging sources. There's also a discussion on different battery types and the strengths and weaknesses of those. And that's gonna help you narrow down on which battery type is gonna be right for your project. And then lastly, there is a conceptual diagram that was requested by one of my students. He wanted to see just how you go from say your solar panel all the way through the system to the end device. So it's gonna show your three major charging sources, solar, shore power, and alternator power, and all the connections through your system down to say your coffee maker or your phone charger. How does your solar panel end up charging your phone and what are all the connections in between there? So if you want your free copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet, just click the link below or you can go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. So with that, let's zoom in a little bit and uh, we'll test our device. All right, so to turn the unit on, what we need to do is just hit this red switch and that is gonna power up these two 12 volt items. We've got the USB outlets and the 12 volt socket there. That's also gonna power up our battery monitor. And uh, the power outlets here are run by the inverter and we have a separate switch for that. The inverter is kind of like a little engine. It's gonna take seven or eight watts for this particular unit we have inside there. And uh, so we don't want that on all the time. If we just turn the general switch on, we're gonna have access to 12 volt power. We're gonna be able to see the battery monitor and uh, the solar is gonna be able to come in and charge the battery, stuff like that. And then when we want 120 volt power, we can turn on this separate switch. And so we'll plug in, I've got a, a little light here. Plug that in and turn on the inverter. So that's gonna light up and then we can uh, turn that inverter off as well. So you don't want that running all the time. It would drain our batteries to have that going. So we have the option to turn that on or off as needed. And as far as the 12 volt side, I've got a little power strip here with a 12 volt socket and that's gonna go in here. You'll see the little green light light up here. You can see that light up. And uh, then when we turn the unit off, it's gonna go dead. So that is the general functionality, not a whole lot to show. Um, Basically, when you turn the off switch off, it's going to disconnect the battery from the rest of the system and it's gonna disconnect the solar. Even if you have solar coming in, it's going to disconnect the solar panel from the rest of the system so that uh, power is not coming in either. And uh, we'll point that out when I open it up. Again, if you want an overall overview of what's going on inside, check out part one, link is below. But uh, as far as the battery monitor, if we just turn that on, we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here and uh, check out some of our numbers. So we've got 13.24 volts there coming out of the battery, negative 0.1 amps coming out. That may be for the consumption of the battery monitor itself. Negative one watt coming out. This is amp hours consumed since the battery had its last full charge. So we're at zero there and the battery is at 100%. So the percentage is gonna be probably the main screen you'll look at to see what's left in the battery. Uh, this is a really handy, straightforward number to tell you what's going on with the battery. Let's go back to the wattage and uh, we'll turn on the inverter. You'll see this jump up to eight watts and that is the consumption of the inverter with nothing plugged into it. And then what we can do is plug in our light and we'll watch it jump up again to 23 watts. So pretty straightforward, but uh, it's just gonna give you some diagnostics and let you know what kind of power is going in or out of your battery. And uh, this will also capture the solar power coming into the battery as well. So at this point, let's open up the solar generator and take a look at some of the wires. So let's do a quick run through of the internal components here. As I said before, if you wanna get a full in-depth review of what's going on inside the box there, check out part one, link is below. So we're gonna start out, we have a 160 amp hour lithium battery, and then positive from the battery is gonna run through a 300 amp a &L fuse. And it's gonna to run to what's called a 220 amp battery protect. And this is going to allow us to hit the switch on the front of the unit and disconnect the battery from the rest of the system. 
So that's how we're able to turn the unit off, so to speak. And uh, on the outside of that battery protect, the outgoing lug is going to have system positive. It's going to have all your positives from the entire system on the outgoing side of that uh, battery protect unit. Now, when it comes to the solar, you can see the solar charge controller here. We have a 30 amp model. Um, the, where the solar is going to originate is that Anderson power pole inlet that we talked about from PowerWorks. And uh, the negative is just going to run to the charge controller. The positive is going to run through another battery protect. And um, this is going to be wired to the same switch as the battery protect that isolates the battery. So by hitting this switch, we're able to cut off solar and cut off the battery and uh, basically open those internal switches and break those lines and kind of shut the unit down. So when we turn the on off switch off, uh, the battery is isolated from everything else and the solar power cannot get into the unit. Um, even if there's sun shining on your solar panel, it'll break that line so the solar power can't get in. So that's how we're going to shut our system down. And uh, the way those work is you have this red wire here. It's going to be 12 volt battery positive. It's going to come into the switch and then it's going to leave the switch with these two blue wires. So the little blue wires, one goes to each of the battery protect devices. And uh, when they get that 12 volt battery positive power, they are going to in connect their internal switch and uh, turn on, essentially turn the unit on. And then when we flip the switch and turn it off, the 12 volt uh, positive power is no longer going to get to them. And uh, they're going to open their switches and uh, basically shut the unit down. That is the same logic as the inverter. You can see the little yellow wire. This is our inverter. And uh, we're going to have the same thing. We're going to have the 12 volt positive power coming from battery positive. And uh, it's going to run out of the switch as this yellow wire. And uh, when the inverter gets that 12 volt positive power, it's going to turn on and, uh, and light up. And so that's how we're able to remotely turn the inverter on and off with this switch. Now, if we go down one level, we have our uh, 12 volt USBs and 12 volt socket, and they just have a positive and negative. The positives for those is actually, it's going to run through a 12 volt fuse block there at the back. And uh, the negatives are going to connect to our negative bus bar there at system negative. And uh, that brings up our next item actually. So system negative is comprised of a shunt that's part of our battery monitor. And uh, so you can see this gray cable here. It's a little bit longer than we needed, but uh, that gray cable connects the battery monitor screen with the shunt where all the measurements and calculations are, are done there at system negative. So if we go down one more layer, we've got the outlets right here and uh, we've got a line you can see I've just plugged in. This is a 15 amp male plug. It's just going to go into the top of the inverter and transfer that power to our power outlet. So that is pretty straightforward. But that is the inside. I hope that all made sense. As I said, if you want a more in-depth explanation of how this was, this was all put together, I would uh, check out part one of this series. I'll link to it down below. And uh, in part three of this series, we're going to go outside and we're going to test the 30, 30 watt solar panel that you saw earlier. And we're also going to plug this into my van where we have a 300 watt panel. And uh, we're going to take some readings and see what kind of power we can get out of this unit. So that's it for this video. I hope that that was helpful. If you want more information about your van power systems, not only solar power, but also alternator power and shore power, be sure to check out the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. Link is below, or you can go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.